What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's the Occupy Fantasy Podcast, and it's late July. You know what that means. The NFL season is right upon us, and it's been a while since we've been back. We decided to get the crew back together to preview the NFL season. Uh, the last time you saw us was the Super Bowl six long months ago, but guys, we've survived. For those of you who don't know, I'm Brian Jester, co-founder of Occupy Fantasy. Uh, let's bring in my first co-host. He's my brother. He's our data guy. You've seen him on the Periscopes. It's Moose. Moose, what's happening? Hey, Brian. How's it going, man? Glad to be on the show again. Yes, sir. And we had to bring him back after his successful uh, Super Bowl appearance. That's Mike Carey, our resident uh, sharp betting expert. What's up, Mike? Hey, Brian. Uh, everything's great. Uh, glad that uh, football is finally being talked about again because I've had it with baseball. <laughs> yeah, join the club. Baseball, we, we say it as many times as we can whether it's in our periscopes and our ultimate guide, you know, baseball is a grind. It's a long season. And by the time July, August hits, it becomes one of the toughest daily fantasy sports to beat for sure. And uh, now as we, as we get into August, we have a bunch of NFL future bets we can make. We get to start to prepare for the best DFS sport NFL preseason. Really excited. Now you got to remember, these are the same guys, these same crew that brought you Nick Foles to win MVP of the Super Bowl, Eagles to win the Super Bowl back when the playoffs started. And a myriad of other prop bets. Guys, how excited are you? Moose, we we crushed the Super Bowl. We did very well. How excited are you to start betting NFL again? Uh I'm seriously, I have a printout on my wall before I go to sleep of uh, five dimes advanced lines, one through 17. I'm like, <laughs> I just can't wait to do this. This is giving me one reason to pull the trigger. <laughs> that that's that's some sick shit, honestly. But <laughs> <laughs> Mike Carey, let, let's let me ask you this. So now some things have changed uh from a, a legal landscape and some of our listeners may be wondering why are you guys talking about betting odds uh but all this kind of mingles in together this sports speculation daily fantasy sports betting season long all kind of mingles together um what are your thoughts on this new law that uh that was so great for all of us that just came out this this year so uh it was actually the overturning of a law as unconstitutional by uh, the supreme court uh the law was called papsa and i believe it was passed in around 1991 and essentially it said that uh nevada and las vegas uh, specifically uh we're going to be the only ones that we're going to allow widespread sports betting save for a few places like delaware and oregon where they allowed uh three game nfl parlays uh so this is a huge deal because not only was it um it was overturned, but it was overturned fully. Uh, so it basically just evaporates into thin air. And now the, America is, again, uh, the Wild West for when it comes to um, speculation on sports betting. So uh, we've already seen uh, some states pass laws uh, allowing their casinos to offer sports betting or allow for places to apply for sports betting, like Delaware and most famously New Jersey. New Jersey was where... Uh, the plaintiff in the uh, Supreme Court case um, was from uh, the Monmouth Park uh, Casino. Um, it's pretty interesting. It's going to be a ways here before we see it, uh, kind of like how it is in England and Ireland, where you're seeing parlors on kind of every corner. Yeah. Um, your 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 bookie is still going to be your best option probably for the time being, but. Uh, if you do live in uh, New York, New Jersey, uh, soon Mississippi, uh, Delaware, uh, you're going to be able to go to your local uh, casino and place future bets, game time bets, live betting, and soon online betting. Uh, so it's just, uh, you know, it's going to be a big thing here. I'm really looking forward to how the leagues are going to react to uh, talking about betting in a real way. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And you know, from us, a daily fantasy perspective, FanDuel and DraftKings are already going to be offering sports betting products. And Moose, I, I'm very high on this uh, this prospect of finding edges in sports betting. You know, sports betting is really tough from a high level perspective. But as these new casinos and sports books open, as different uh, markets open, there's going to be things that we can exploit. What What are your thoughts on uh, on new new people getting into betting and and you know, adding this to our portfolio, we played DFS, but now we're going to start adding sports betting in. How do you think it's going to be profitable? And maybe not this year because only a couple of states have legalized it, but as it grows in the future. Yeah. So right now, if you're outside of Nevada, 
it's going to be tough to uh, be profitable. Uh, unless if you're doing niche markets, I mean, FanDuel, their sports book up in Monmouth Park, they're doing 40 cent baseball lines. You're not yeah. going to be able to beat that. That's stupid. Um, the, the thing on Twitter today is they ran out of cash last night to pay off some bets. <laughs> <laughs> not Way to go, bro. Not, yeah, hashtag not good. Yeah. No. Um, um, but even with then, um, it, it's been super profitable. Um, for the three main jurisdictions, Delaware, New Jersey, and Nevada. Um, Delaware, last month, their first, first full month of operation, they, their books won about a little under 900,000, about 875,000. Compare that to Nevada, you know, almost 8 million. A lot. New Jersey had about 3.1. Um, they're, they're crushing it. Um, and that's, I think it's going to be because of there's so much public money. There's going to be way more public money way more public lines and that over maybe, maybe not like you said this year, but maybe in a couple of years, those lines are going to start being real stale. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll probably see regional lines depending on which area you're in and who would have thought uh, sports betting provides revenue for the state. It's really novel idea. Huh, guys? <laughs> I absolutely. I, know, uh, <laughs> I contacted uh, one of the state legislators in Maryland. They, uh, the Senate or one of the chambers, pass something and then the other chamber said no it won't bring enough money in we'll have to review it in a couple years like, come on way to go way to go so, maryland all right so all right let's let's stop talking about how much maryland sucks and let's talk about what we came here to talk about and that's betting futures looking at previewing the nfl season now's the time we can look at before training camp start we can really start to make some bets before more information comes out before we get uh, all the hype of training camp we can find some bets that we really like to make. And, you know, actually, before we get to this, I don't want to bury the lead any longer, but, you know, Mike Carey and I, we have a prop bet together. And if you see this on my hand, if you're watching the video on YouTube, I have a little broken finger situation here. And that's a result of training for our prop bet. Um, and Moose, you're, you're, the, you're one of the betting guys here. I want you to set a line. So our prop bet, Mike Carey has to finish. What is it? Is it a half marathon? It's a half marathon in Vegas in November. That sounds miserable. And I have to dunk a basketball in a 10-foot rim uh, with two hands before the end of the year. Moose, set the line. Who's, who's going to win? Uh, will nobody win? Is there a draw? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say uh, neither, neither is accomplished minus 500. <laughs> what? You got to be kidding. That's bad. No. Okay. I want to bet Dude, no you, draw. All right. All right. Here's my reasoning. Brian, you literally jumped and sprained your finger. <laughs> <laughs> You're that so old. Be, okay, that might be fair, but okay, that might be All fair. All right, the line what? open. The line open. You minus two hundred that you couldn't dunk, or that you wouldn't dunk. What That's is the line now? Two. What is the line now? Like minus three fifty. Dude, no. Oh my god. I'm like, well, <laughs> you I'm showing me. You showed me two videos, and one you sprained your finger. Two, <laughs> you barely touched the. You didn't even touch the rim. <laughs> Uh, this is a bad like me back in middle school. This is a bad look. Uh, Mike Carey, what are your thoughts? Uh, what, what, what do you think is going to happen, Mike? Well, I mean, uh, I did three miles today, so I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I've kind of started my pre-training into training, uh, which is definitely highly necessary before getting into an actual <laughs> running program. I mean, I'm basically going from the couch to 13.1 miles, <laughs> which uh, should be – Interesting, but I will say, I mean, there would be a lot of shame involved if I wasn't able to accomplish this, considering I'm doing with it with her, my wife and her best friend. Nice. So yeah. there's no way that I can really like drag ass enough and not do this. So if it kills me, it kills me. If he dies, he dies, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I think I'll be able to do it. It's just, uh, enough time and put it in, uh, and I mean, I think Jester, I think you, you've got no problem. I think Moose is undervaluing us a big time. I, uh, yeah, I completely agree. But also, yours is a test of endurance and like you could just willpower your way through it. Mine, I may not physically be able to get that high. Although uh, I think minus 500 is maybe the worst line ever set. <laughs> <laughs> I have faith. I mean, you're just getting back to what you used to be able to do. Um, I agree that mine is more a test of endurance and. You know, eventually I'm, I'll get to a point where I'll be able to accomplish 13.1 miles, but certainly, absolutely no one's going to want 
uh, Periscope videos of that entire experience. <laughs> well, no, first I will give you one one word of, of advice, Mike Carey. Uh, I was out in Vegas back in November. Uh, they were doing a marathon, and people were just chugging beers the whole time. Nobody was really even like focused on the marathon. They were just partying and having a good time. So you got that going for you. So there you that's go. excellent news. I, I mean, if that's included, that's got to move the line in my favor big time. <laughs> I mean, if you're just shotgunning we'll a beer every mile. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, let's. All right, but let's keep a beer in front of me. It's like a you know Lucy moving the football every time. I'm going to go right for it. So. <laughs> um, there you go. That's uh that's motivation for sure. You talked yeah. about you talked about running the uh, marathon with your wife. Now, let me just say your wife's pretty cool because she encourages your uh, sports speculation activity. So uh, gentlemen out there, uh, choose wisely. Uh, people say. Uh, you know, marriage kind of sucks, but if you choose the right partner, Mike Carey's wife is a testament that she'll let you bet some NFL futures every now and then. Absolutely. Especially when you bring home the bacon and the Super Bowl every year. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we, the more Nick Foles MVPs we win, the happier the wife is. Absolutely. Um, all right. So guys, let's, let's, right, let's get down to it. We spent 12 minutes talking about basically nothing. Okay. So NFL futures, Moose, we have a variety of different types of bets uh, to win the Super Bowl, team totals, what what are you looking for now when you're you're looking for a future bet to make before training camp starts? Uh, so the first biggest thing is you want to have at least more than one out. Um, I would say probably you at least have to have two. I have like eight, which is maybe a little overdoing it. <laughs> yeah, 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 but uh, but no, I mean because it will get to into specifics. Yeah, in a little bit, but there's you can probably find you know a ten something might be ten to one on one site and twenty to one on the other site. You know, it's an extreme, but that that's definitely a possibility. Yeah, and we'll talk about one later actually, where there's a massive difference. Uh, so definitely stay tuned throughout the whole episode because we have a bunch of bets we like, and there are major differences at different sports books. Mike, Carey, what about you? What are things you're looking for at this time of year? Well, I mean, especially with uh, things like uh, Super Bowl or to win uh, the division, we're looking at teams who we're, we're not looking at any winners. So we're, we're, we're not even paying attention to any lines regarding the Patriots, the Eagles. Um, we're looking at teams with plus odds who are going to exceed expectations, who are undervalued by the public, of course. You know, fade the public would be is my is going to be my first tattoo, I think. Um, you know, just you're going to you're going to watch ESPN and they're going to tell you how great, uh, you know, the Eagles are going to be, uh, how awesome uh, the 49ers will be, uh, how tough the AFC South is going to be. And, how, you know, all, all, the, all these kind of things. And, and that's just going to feed into the public's perception. Uh, you're going to if you if you're paying attention to the lines, you know, starting now, you're going to see some sharp movement on some of some of these lines. And you're going to want to file that sharp money. That's always a good move. Fade the public, file the sharp money. That's a successful uh, move to do in, in any any part of sports betting. So let's, let's get right to it. Let's talk about our Super Bowl bets that we like so far. Now, granted, Super Bowl bets have been out for a while. They haven't been pounded into shape as much as, say, uh, projected win totals for the season for each team. Uh, there's still tons and tons of value out there to win the Super Bowl. So Mike Carey, I'll go right back to you. I have a fantastic bet that I think to win the Super Bowl. I may have been talking about it for the past four months. I know you both of you guys are sick of it. Um, it's the Chicago Bears that you can get them at more than 100 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. And I'll come back and, and say why I like them so much. But Mike Carey, let's go to you. Let's talk about uh, the different bets you like to win the Super Bowl. And you got to think about it. When we're making these bets, we may not necessarily think they're going to win the Super Bowl. But if they can get to the playoffs, we can uh, we can hedge our way out and, and guarantee a good amount of money. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let you talk about the Bears. I think you've kind of convinced me on them as the long shot of the season here. Uh, and again, like with uh, with uh, future bets, especially for the Super Bowl, you're not going to see real really any line movement unless there's a catastrophic injury uh, in the preseason or until actual games are played. So right now is when you can really find some value on Super Bowl bets before you know the first snap in the hall of fame game uh so my other than the bears uh my next tier in the kind of like maybe 40 uh to maybe 15 the one odds uh my first one is the houston texans 
Houston plays the easiest schedule uh, of all the teams in the NFL. Uh, they do play in the AFC South with Jacksonville and Tennessee, which is going to be tough, but both of them play much harder schedules. Before Deshaun Watson got injured, they were averaging over 30 points a game. DeAndre Hopkins was, you know, he was going to be – up there with the receiving leaders. Will Fuller was, had already seven touchdowns, I think, in about four or five weeks before Deshaun Watson went down. And you also have to remember that their entire defense lost through injury, uh, you know, most of their front seven. And it looks like everybody's coming back healthy. I mean, you got to uh, hope that uh, hope that they're healthy after almost a whole year off. Um, at this point, if they're not healthy now, they're never going to be. Uh, but but Deshaun Watson is a uh, is the type of quarterback right now where he's on his rookie deal, so they don't have to spend much on uh, a quarterback. They can spend more at other places. He's mobile, and apparently Bill O'Brien this year um, has really kind of deconstructed the offense to fit his uh, certain skill set. Uh, so I, I expect uh, big things from them. And like I said, they're really only going to be t- challenged by teams within their division uh in games uh in the regular season so i i feel even if they don't win the division i'm high on them to make the playoffs and i believe right now on five dimes they do have uh minus odds to make the playoffs i think around minus 130. uh so if they get in you know they've got a shot if that defense is healthy yeah and you get them at what 25 to 1 i think right yeah that's right excuse they're they're going off at 25 to 1 this is on uh five dimes right now okay and yeah, I mean, I like that bet a lot. Like you said, the biggest thing for me is their defense coming back. JJ Watts coming back healthy, uh, Whitney Merciless, and all those two plus Deshaun Watson were all three cleared for camp, so they're healthy, ready to go. Um, you know, they had the biggest difference in wins from last year to projected wins this year, and like you said, minus odds to make the playoffs, but twenty five to one to win the Super Bowl. Uh, that's some good uh, profit there if they do end up in the uh, in, in the playoffs here in December. Moose, now I looked at the notes here. You and Mike Carey both have Jacksonville at 22 to 1. And I agree with you guys. I think they're undervalued again, and they may have improved from last year. Moose, what are your thoughts on them? Yeah, I, I definitely like Jacksonville. Um, I'm looking here at their, their strength of schedule this year based off just last year's win percentage. They're, they're that, they have what, the seventh easiest schedule? That right there, right there, it's basically saying, you know, cut in half after hedge, 10 to 1 that one of the easiest scheduled and best teams is going to make the playoffs. Right. And, and um, you go ahead. No, go ahead, Mo. Sorry. I was going to say, um, I take a slightly different approach when, I, when I'm when i seeing these big shot, like uh, futures, you know, over the 21s, stuff like that. I take a more high level approach. Um, say, potentially, Jacksonville's a good team. They got better than last year. They're playing a a, a, a shitty schedule, pretty much. Um, I don't really see any big competition going their way. I only see them going up from here. Those are the the kind of the higher level things that I take for these long shots, and that's kind of where I think you can find some value. Yeah, and sometimes it really is just that simple. Like you don't have to do all this deep in depth analysis. That's hey, they made it to the AFC Championship game last year. They've improved. They've improved their offensive line. Uh, added some pieces on defense. They look really good at 22 to one. Um, okay, let's talk about let's okay. I, I can't let you guys talk any longer without talking about the Bears or 100 to one. I'm gonna run it down really quickly. Okay, I'm gonna run it down really quickly while I like the Bears. Okay, Mitchell Trubisky, one of the best shotgun quarterbacks in the league last year, ran I think almost 98% of his snaps in college from shotgun. Last year, they ran one of the lowest shotgun rates in the entire NFL. And now they got Matt Nagy, Mark Harrisley coming over from Oregon. Uh, to bring this offense into the the 21st century. John Fox and and crew had a Stone Age offense. This offense is going to be exciting. They're going to run RPOs, all these different concepts that really take uh, Trubisky's skill set and and bring it to the forefront and and play to his strengths. They had a top five defense as far as efficiency goes last year. Now they add Roquan Smith. They re-signed a bunch of guys. Roquan Smith, assuming he signs anytime soon, their first round draft pick at linebacker, who I'm sure we'll talk about here in a second at uh, defensive rookie of the year potentially and their win total six and a half the, the 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 juice is crazy high on the over there so sharps are expecting them to win more than six and a half games and 
you know, just really excited about the offensive coaching change. Trubisky, tons of pieces they added on offense. Uh, second year quarterbacks traditionally improve a ton from year one to year two. And Mike Carey, like you said, with Deshaun Watson, they have a, a rookie quarterback on a cheap deal. They can build the team around him, which is what they have done so far. And I, I think they're in a great position to make the playoffs. And 100 to 1 is just criminally undervalued. You guys, you, you go ahead and blast me for what you want. No, no, no. I mean, I, I, I think uh, I agree with you. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think uh, Nagy or Helfrich uh, know that you could take a snap under center. Um, at least they, they didn't show that at Oregon. Uh, they're, they've added a lot on offense. And I think, it, you know, they had a strong running game already with uh, Jordan Hayward. And um, they, they're going to have – they added another piece. Uh, he's coming back from injury, but Allen Robinson, uh, he was basically hurt in the first couple of snaps in week one last year after leading the league in touchdown receptions in 2016. I mean, even if you get him back – and get 80% of that production, that is a huge amount of reliability. And he is a uh, guy that you're going to look for in the red zone. He can go up and come down with the ball. So, um, no, I really like this move. And, you know, it really starts on defense uh, with these championship teams. I mean, the old cliche of defense wins championships. I mean, every year it just gets proven more and more in the NFL uh, that the team that can stop the run and especially stop the pass now. Um, is gonna is gonna go far. Uh, so no, I think th this is a of all the teams in the hundred to one area. I mean, just that they're at the same odds as the Browns makes them undervalued. <laughs> right. Okay. That's okay. I thought that too. Um, yeah. Hundred to one. So you can find them hundred to one on five dimes right now. There are a couple other sites that have them more than one hundred to one. Uh, definitely go check that out. Okay. Before we move on to the next type of bet, uh, Moose. Yeah, any other? Can I, can I just interject real quick. Yeah, please do. Go ahead. Yep. And just to show you the importance of line shopping and how crazy uh, these new sports books that are popping up, like land base, uh, we were over at Dover Downs in Delaware, and they had the Bears, I think, 60 to 1. That's insane. So you're getting an extra $40 to your dollar just by line shopping. Yep, just go to Five Dimes or Bookmaker or any of those other sites. Uh, you can at least get 100 to 1. Um, real quick, I also like Baltimore 40 to one and I like Minnesota 11 to one. Uh, Mike, any thoughts on those or any other teams that you like? No, I like, uh, I like Baltimore a lot, uh, especially if they, uh, cut Flacco tomorrow, like they should, uh, he's the least efficient quarterback last year. Um, this, you know, there, there's, there's no debate anymore. He is not worth his contract. Uh, they should be going to Lamar Jackson. I think they want, I, I'm really excited to see Lamar Jackson. Uh, Minnesota, I expect them. Uh, we're going to talk about the you know division winners here. I think uh, Minnesota is probably the leader in the clubhouse there in the NFC North. Uh, the only other one that I have would be Atlanta. I'm pretty big on Atlanta this year. I, I've seen them at 21 to one. Uh, this is year two for uh, Steve Sarkeesian being the offensive coordinator. Uh, they added Calvin Ridley, which I mean Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley and uh, Dante Freeman. I mean. I don't, I mean, that, that is going to be really difficult for defenses to stop. Um, and uh, I think they've made th their defense has got to improve. Yes. I mean, that is their one probably Achilles heel is that their defense isn't very good. Um, but it, it almost can't get any worse than it was last year. It's about 30th in defensive efficiency last year. So some improvement there with maybe, um, seven to 10 point uptick in average points per game by the offense. Uh, I think Atlanta at 21 to one is a pretty good bet. Yeah. And they're, they're due for some positive regression on the offensive side of the ball. As far as touchdowns go, both Julio Jones and Matt Ryan. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Atlanta this year. I'll be big on them. And I like your bet at 21 to one. Uh, Moose, any other ones that you like real quick? Uh, just real quick. Um, New Orleans, 16 to one green Bay, 13 to one. Um, I mean, it's hard not to, to, to get a, Get some action on those. I mean, if you have a top five quarterback, top ten wide receiver, top ten for the Saints running back as well, you get top ten pretty much every position. It's kind of hard not to to put something in that that uh, category. That's fair. Hard to argue with that that logic. All right, guys, let's let's move over to win totals. Uh, maybe some to win division bets. Uh, we talked about how tough that AFC South is going to be. I like a lot of the teams in that division, guys, and. 
I like the Titans over eight wins. I like the Colts over six and a half. And that line, Moose, I texted you when uh, Andrew Luck was uh, not going to be on the pup to start the, the training camp. He was going to be a full go. And we saw that line or the juice on that move pretty significantly. Um, so now I think they're looking at minus 160 over six and a half. A lot of these win totals, guys, have been pounding the shape. Sharps really like to bet these when they first come out. There's a really big edge. Now, by the time training camp comes around, most of these lines are are really tough to win because, like I said, they came out two or three months ago. So, um, Moose, let's go to you. Do you think anything after all these lines have come out now and been pounded in the shape? Any, whether it's whether it's team total, uh, win totals, or to win division bets, or to win to make the playoff bets, Moose, what do you what do you think is, is still available that people out there can bet and, and be profitable? I think the the biggest one that hasn't been pounded in shape yet is I think Philly under 10 wins. Um, and I think it's more of a public line, uh, especially with the regional sports opening. You have the Meadowlands right, literally right next to Philly, uh, other things like that. They're get they're pounding this over. They're thinking they're going to win the Super Bowl again, all that stuff. Um, and I think just all that's been, been fading over into other books. I think it's just a little bit too high. Looking at their schedule, I can see them win eight games, maybe nine games. But that, that 10 seems really, really tough. They're, they're going to have to get 11. I don't see them getting that any time this season. That's a pretty hot take. I think most people expect the, the Eagles to to easily win the NFC East and, and make the playoffs. But you can get – I think the juice is pretty good on the under 10 wins. So um, I like that bold call, Moose. Mike Harris, go to you. Any any uh, team totals still stick out to you uh, that aren't super juiced up? Uh, I think uh, depending on what you can get for the Dolphins, I've seen it anywhere between five and a half and six and a half. I like the over, especially if you can get it five and a half or six. Uh, six and a half is pretty rich, but uh, the Dolphins, if you remember, last year won six games starting Cutler at four, for 14 games and Matt Moore for two. Their first game got rained out. Then they had to play in London and play the next week. And then di- didn't have to have their buy, had to play that first game as a postponement. I mean, they basically had no break once the season started and still won six games. If you can get them at over five and a half, I think that's a really solid bet. They added, even w- with Jarvis Landry leaving, uh, I really like what they got on um, on the offensive skill positions. And, I mean, this is a homer pick, uh, but I think Mike Kosicki is going to be an NFL a big time NFL tight end, uh, the rookie out of Penn State. Uh, he's basically Jesse James, but better. Um, you know, same same measurables and everything, but it just seems he has better ke- pass catching ability. You go back and look at uh, what uh, the Penn State bowl games uh, from the last two years in the Big Ten championship game from 2016. Um, some extremely incredible uh, versatility and catching ability there. Uh, Real quick, I, 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 I want to interrupt yeah. you. Just so our listeners know, Mike Harry is a huge Penn State fan, and so far he has talked about Mike Desecchi, Alan Robinson, and Bill O'Brien. Um, that, <laughs> that, that checks all the boxes. So you, you, yeah, you know, I, we haven't even gotten to the uh, the cherry on top yet. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, these guys seem not to me. You know, what can I say? You know, I I, I see some uh, I see some uh, Homer picks from you coming up as well. So <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. Okay. Okay. But uh, some other. Um, a couple of other uh, totals that uh, I like are the Bills under six and a half and the Seahawks under eight and a half. The Bills blew it by making the playoffs last year, and then they traded all of their draft picks in a co- convoluted way to get Josh Allen. They let their entire offensive line walk. They have a brand new offensive line, and that was the strength of the Bills last season. LaShawn McCoy could be in potential legal trouble. Uh, it, I mean, if he falls anywhere close to, um, this assault on his girlfriend, uh, he's going to be out maybe for the remainder of the season. Once that's decided, uh, with the Seahawks, you, they, they've all of a sudden become the team that's paying the most at quarterback in that division other than, uh, Garoppolo, but his deal is extremely team friendly and basically getting one-time payout this season. They've lost the Legion of Boom. I mean, those guys are gone or old. Uh, their run game, uh, 
you know, it, it's not what they used to do. They went to a running back by committee. They drafted Rashard Penny. I mean, who could be good? I mean, he, in this bowl game, I think he had 900 yards um, <laughs> against, but against Navy so, and lost. So, I mean, what does that say? Uh, and I know that because I had uh, Navy. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, in, in a in that division. Their, their schedule is also incredibly hard this year. Uh, it's harder on uh, pass defenses. You know, uh, it's basically going to be Russell Wilson running around for his life, heating up bombs at the end of the game to try to come back. And I just don't see where you can build a winning record uh, doing that. Uh, this is kind of like the end, I think, for the Seahawks that we knew in, in, uh, in, oh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I couldn't agree more there. And 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 talking about them under eight and a half wins, and then talking about their defense failing, um, that kind of sets up one of our bets here at the end of the show, uh, a long shot bet, and we'll get to that here shortly. Moose, let's go back to you really quickly. You and I talked about some of your favorite uh, bets to to make the playoffs, and your 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 Bengals. I actually like this, and I know Moose. If, for those of you who don't know, Moose is a, a Bengals fan, although he's a realistic Bengals fan. Um, you have them making the playoffs moves. Why do you, why do you like them? Well, the odds are great. First of all, I guess. Yeah, it's crazy. So on five times right now, you can get Bengals to make the playoffs at plus five fifty. Um, back to that high level strength of schedule. They actually have the easiest strength of schedule or second easiest strength of schedule uh, this year. And then even looking at the go ahead lines, they're there's, they're never a big underdog. I mean, look, just even week two against the Bengals or uh, I mean against the Ravens or pick them. Um, I think their highest uh, underdog is their seven-point underdog. I can easily see them going eight and eight, nine and seven, and with that division, that's that's definitely an easy. Uh, you can be able to win the division, but not that not that crazy. Uh, they can get it sneak into the wild card. I think they can too. They've imp- the biggest thing is they've improved their offensive line. Uh, yeah. At it, we talked about Buffalo and their entire offensive line walk. Uh, they they shipped over Glenn, and the Bengals drafted Ronnie Price. They really upgraded their offensive line. So one that'll help Joe Mixon. Two, Andy Dalton has one of the biggest differentials in passer ratings between uh, being kept clean and being under pressure. He was under pressure a lot last year, and his statistics and his production suffered. If that offensive line does hold up and, and improves like we think they will, that entire offense will improve, and that'll only help their chances. Most I think plus five fifty. Is a really great bet. So good call there. Moose, real quick, any other just you don't have to explain them, but any other bets that you like for teams to make the playoffs? Um, the other one, um, Jacksonville. Um, I mean, that's kind of go ahead with the Super Bowl uh bet. But I will make this one note. Um, I do have a note under here under the Bengals to make the playoffs plus five fifty. If they make it, Max bet them to lose first round and break my heart <laughs> in sad face. <laughs> That, okay, that, that may be the sharpest bet we have on this entire podcast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Gosh. Um, but I, I like the Chiefs to win their division at, at, uh, at plus 215 right now. That's really good. That's really good. And, uh, you know, they just basically drop in Pat Mahomes for Alex Smith as Sammy Watkins. That defense is going to be is going to be uh, suspect, but it, it is not the strongest division. In the world, so I think plus two fifteen is is great odds if you can get those. Um, yeah, I yeah, think- that division is uh, pick who you like and roll with it because anything could happen in that division. Yeah, seriously, you really could. Only one I would not bet is Oakland because I think John Gruden is uh kind of stuck in nineteen ninety five. We'll we'll see how that goes. But what was that quote he said? Something about like we need to whatever was doing successful, we just needed not do the opposite of that or something. Yeah, I think it was taken out of the context, but he was talking about analytics. Um, but all I know is he wants to play Doug Martin and Jordy Nelson and guys he saw on Monday Night Football. So we'll, I don't think this this second time around is going to go very well for him. Oakland is one of the few teams in the league, maybe the only team in the league that actually got older this season. <laughs> yeah, which, seems which that is tough. I mean, they went every. I think every one of their free agent signings was thirty four or older, and I, I don't. And I don't think that's an exaggeration at all. No, I think I think you're actually right. Yeah, Doug Martin, Jordy Nelson, Derek Johnson. Um, yeah, the list goes on. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, all right. Good talk so far, boys. Now let's, this is my bread and butter. The, uh, the awards props, your MVP, offensive rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year had great success when I was in the game in the past. 
uh, RG3 um, was was a big win. Bunch of defensive uh, Aaron Donald, bunch of big wins. And these lines, I, I'll just tell you right now, they're way off. There are so many great bets you can make at MVP, but more importantly, offensive and de- defensive rookie of the year. Uh, Mike Carey, since we've already talked about Penn State and you being a homer. I don't think offensive rookie of the year is really that much of a race so far. I think there are a couple of cheap long shots you can take, but I think it wouldn't be a surprise that you agree with me that uh, Saquon Barkley's the favorite. I mean, for good reason, but he's also probably the bet you should make. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's only at plus 140 right now, but uh, you're talking about a, a player who's going to start day one, uh, get absolutely every target. Uh, that you could possibly get. He's going to be the first, second, and third down running back. He's going to catch balls out of the backfield. I mean, again, I'm telling you this from watching him the last two years, every snap he's played. I mean, he is basically a wide receiver. He's the first player in the combine that's over 250 and ran a sub 4 five forty. So he's got strength and speed. I mean, if he gets out there, he can make people look really dumb. Uh it, against Iowa last year, the highlight reel uh, speaks for itself. He basically jumped over uh, a defender, got hit in the side by another defender, and I, he did not break stride. You know, on in that same game, uh, made the line, uh, linebacker from Iowa look like a fool with you know where a tackle would have ended the game. So I mean, he's just he's got he's absolutely got it together when it comes to um the intangibles off the field he is a good kid good head on his shoulders i mean does all the right things bought his mom a house with his first check putting all the entire salary away uh only living off endorsements i mean he he's just together he wants to win he says everything right for the team not one word about himself uh he's a perfect fit in uh, for the Giants, I'm so jealous. My wife's a Giants fan. Um, I've basically bought everything Saquon Barkley except for a Giants shirt, <laughs> which yeah. I refuse to do. Yeah, you gotta, um, draw, you gotta draw the line. I, gotta, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I fully expect him to uh, run away, no pun intended, with the Rookie of the Year uh, race. I mean, but barring, of course, injury, I mean, he's going to be the guy. Uh, if you're if you're looking for a longer shot, I would look right at the exact same place uh, with Sam Darnold at fifteen to one. Um, I see that he's about three to one to start week one. That might be a bet too, yeah. because Josh McCown is uh, seventy five approximately. Uh, they and they already jettisoned uh, the other backup quarterbacks. Bryce Petty somewhere else. Christian Hackenberg's out of the league. Again, another Penn State guy. Um, Darnold, though, um, he's ready. He, he's they, they have no reason not to play him. Every right. snap right. that he takes uh, is going to pay dividends come next year. I mean, he just needs to take his licks right now and don't put him out there if he's going to get hurt. But absolutely with Darnold, I think he could be a guy that starts 16 games for, for the Jets, has the best numbers. And, again, it's a quarterback-heavy league. Even if Barkley, Barkley would need to put up maybe, uh, you know, double-digit touchdowns at the very least, and probably maybe like twenty touchdowns to really get um, over a quarterback that's racking up a whole season's worth of yards and touchdowns. Yeah, sixteen starts is huge for a rookie quarterback in the in the rookie of the year race, and that may not be the case. Baker Mayfield, I think, is like plus four hundred, and he may not start a game all year. He's probably the worst value at the position. The one quarterback yeah, I do know, like. Yeah, don't not don't, that Baker Mayfield. And I, yeah. I and you and we can come back to this podcast at the end of the year when Baker Mayfield wins the rookie of the year, and I'll still say that was a good no bet. Yeah, I mean he they, they basically said he's sitting on the bench for at least half the year at the at the at the worst. So um that's just a terrible, terrible bet. Darnold, if he starts 16 games, I do like that. I love Lamar Jackson. I think everyone on this podcast loves Lamar Jackson. The second you get word that he he's going to start for the Ravens, as long as it's not halfway through the season, look to find him at rookie of the year odds. Uh, we've seen mixed signals in camp. John Harbaugh said we have to get him on the field one way or the other. Uh, NFL Network yesterday said that he's been inconsistent, but he's he's pushing Joe Flacco. The sooner he gets in the lineup, the better for the Ravens. And uh, the, the type of game he has with the running and the passing, that just leads itself to massive fantasy production, which leads to votes for Rookie of the Year. Moose, let's go to you real quick. I know you uh, 
you probably agree with us on Saquon Barkley, but do you have any, any long shots that you like? Yeah, I mean, uh, I de- there's, there is one long shot, but I will just mention back to, to Mike Carey. Um, that whole hurrah you just did made me go on five dimes right now and put in that Saquon Barkley bet. Uh, <laughs> he's, actually plus, he's actually plus 155 now. Oh, so my gosh, awesome. I need to get on there. <laughs> yeah, take that money uh, to the bank. Yeah. Start spending that money now, Moose. Um, but I actually like um, DJ Moore as offensive rookie of the year at 30 to 1. Um, he literally had like a linebacker throw to him last year, uh, and he got first team all conference, <laughs> bought out. Um, right now, he's a third string wide receiver, so he's going to be starting from game one. Uh, all the practice reports I've read that he actually might even be moving up to second or maybe long shot first wide receiver. So if you can get somebody who's going to start every game and with that, with that intangible and quality that he have, that's that's a good thing for thirty to one. Yeah, that's true. I mean, his talent level, first round pick, uh, Cam Newton throwing him the ball, thirty to one is is a decent long shot odds if uh, uh, if you're not on the Saquon Barkley train and you don't think any of these quarterbacks are going to start sixteen games. Um, let's jump over to the defensive side of the ball, defensive rookie of the year. I have the bet of the year. I believe. Uh, first of all, I do like Roquan Smith. I think you can get him at five or six to one. Really like him. Linebackers tend to win this award as long as they can rack up tackles. But boys, I'm going to let you in on a secret. Let our listeners in on a secret here. Tremaine Evans, he's the, the rookie linebacker for Buffalo. They took him in the first round. He's nine to one right now on five dimes. That's a great bet first and foremost. You look at any of the IDP fantasy projections you trust. If you play individual defensive player leagues, Tremaine Edmonds is projected at worst to be a top 15 linebacker this year. Uh, and that's ex- that's not just including rookies. That's all players across the board. So he's going to have a big fantasy season. We talked about the Bills having one of the worst rosters in the league. They should be trailing a, t- a ton of games, which means tons and tons of tackles for Tremaine Edmonds. But here's the kicker. Bookmaker.eu, Bookmaker didn't list him as one of the uh, potential winners for the award. So he's included in the field. And you can get the field at 30 to 1. On bookmaker, so right now you can go bet Tremaine, Tremaine Edmonds to win the defensive rookie of the year at bookmaker at 30 to 1 odds. That's so important about why that's why line sh- uh, shopping is so important, exactly. So 30 to 1, love him, Roquan. If you want to back it up with him in case of injury, uh, but guys, that's one of the best bets on the board. Mike, here, any, any thoughts or any additions to that? Uh, no, I mean, exactly. That's a number one, like line shopping. Um, you know, sometimes your local bookie, when it comes to uh, bets like defensive rookie of the year, MVP, that sort of thing, they might not have, you know, every player that you're looking for, especially these guys that are down to 20, 30 to one. Uh, so, th- I mean, that's a, you know, check with uh, the field bet is, is great because you're going to get people that, well, if anybody's drafted out of, you know, third or fourth round, they're not going to make it or whatever. So, you know, field bet's not bad. Anything can happen with these rookies. You never know. Um, I like, uh, for defensive rookie of the year, I like uh, Derwin James, safety uh, for the Chargers. Um, he's kind of getting placed in a well-oiled machine, kind of like Roquan Smith. Uh, he's going to get an opportunity uh, to really, like, clean up the run defense for uh for the Chargers, he's more of a, uh, a safety that plays up closer to the line, and he's a big body that can make tackles. Uh, so he's, his tackle numbers are going to be high. Again, it's it's that flash stat when it comes to rookie of the year. You're going to need, you know, for Tremaine Edward, Edmonds, you're going to need a combination of fumble recoveries, uh, you know, a highlight reel, touchdown, run back, something like that. You know, that's the kind of stuff that runs you rookie of the year. I think Derwin James. Um, especially if he's used in any sort of special teams play, uh, could be uh, an interesting pick for rookie of the year. I mean, if he gets the ball in his hands, he's going to take it back uh, to the end zone. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how the Chargers do. I mean, it, uh, we talked earlier about kind of how the Chargers might be a, a sneak pick in that um, AFC West. Uh, definitely something to consider. Their defense is going to be incredible. Yeah, they should be really good as long as they can get an analytics head in there. I posted an article the other day. Apparently, they don't have any analytics employees in their in their organization, which is is mind blowing in 2018. So, uh, is that not yeah. good? Yeah, I don't think that's good. If they can overcome that somehow, uh, you know, I, I really like their team. Uh, okay, let's go MVP. <laughs> I don't even like saying this, and you guys gave me shit already when I when I <laughs> mentioned this off air. I've been one of the biggest Kirk Cousins detractors while he's been 
in Washington. But at 27 to 1 to win MVP, and we all like Minnesota's team this year to potentially either win the division, make the playoffs, or even win the Super Bowl. You get Kirk Cousins, who I thought would be exposed once he goes to the open market. But he's so lucky he gets paired with John DeFilippo, the quarterback who engineered a near MVP run from Carson Wentz last year if he didn't get hurt. So now you got a, a, a great offensive coordinator running a hyper efficient offense, uh, a named quarterback who got tons of guaranteed money on a team that could win the Super Bowl. 27 to 1 is just incredible odds. So, uh, Mike, Mike Carey, feel free to, uh, to fry me now. Yeah, so I uh, actually looked up some old G chats that we had about Kirk Cousins, and it was hot and cold. Oh, he's the greatest. Uh, oh, no, he's, he's a bum. He's not going to last another week. You know, oh, I can't wait for him to go. Trade him now for a fourth, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so just that you've come full circle on the Cousins bandwagon is hilarious for me. Um, having said that, uh, I, I didn't really want to see him go out of Washington. Um, I thought he was better than maybe whatever we could get. I don't know if Alex Smith's going to pay off. Uh, here's good things, bad things, but I mean, I would stay away from the Redskins and any sort of future bets if, if you're thinking about that. Um, but at 27 to one, he, he's going to have an opportunity to put up some solid numbers. And something that I think you, you might not think about is the Minnesota running back uh, depth is awful this year. They get Dal Dalvin Cook back, uh, who they lost injury around I think week six last year, uh, but. Uh, Jarek McKinnon's gone. There's really nobody behind Dalvin Cook. If Dalvin Cook goes down, it's going to be all cousins all the day, all day. So, um, I mean, he put up incredible numbers in Washington. Uh, maybe it kind of undervalued because of the win-loss record there, but he's going to have a great opportunity to take uh, Minnesota, you know, possibly to a Super Bowl uh, behind uh, that defense. Uh, I don't think uh, while he was at Washington – he uh, had a defense that ranked higher than 18th in the league. Now we're, you know, we're looking at a top five defense in Minnesota. So he's just going to get even more opportunities. Yeah, huge turnaround. Should be more short fields for him, which should lead to more touchdowns. Um, I will be, I mean, I'll be happy if, if he wins MVP and they win the Super Bowl because I'll, I'll make a ton of money. Uh, <laughs> but I will be fully miserable seeing Kirk Cousins. Fully miserable see him win the MVP award after uh, all the shit I talked about him. Um. Let's uh let's move on. Well, I guess we have some more bets to talk about. But Moose, you pinpointed a bet to me, and we both saw it on Twitter. Then we both realized that we could actually get it ourselves, and that's Doug Baldwin. We talked about Seattle's um, tough schedule this year. Talked about the Legion of Boom being gone. It's gonna be all Russell Wilson all the time. Moose, we found some really good odds on Doug Baldwin to lead the league in receiving. Yeah, over at uh, Five Dimes, I went ahead and got this action down. You can get Doug Baldwin to have the most receiving yards, 54 to 1. That's insane. 54 to 1. I know a lot of people are going to bet, you know, Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, Odell Beckham. And I certainly get that. But you got to think about who's gone now for Seattle. Jimmy Graham is gone. Paul Richardson is gone. So there's tons of targets up in the air. And the last time Jimmy Graham wasn't in the lineup, uh, Doug Baldwin went on the stretch where I nearly went bankrupt in DFS because I faded him every week and everyone, he was like 70% owned and he continued to crush literally. Okay. Look, listen to this <laughs> over his final eight games, over his final eight games in 2016 when, or 2015, when Jimmy Graham was out of the lineup, he was on pace for 94 receptions, 1300 yards and 24 touchdowns. He just got peppered with targets, converted every single one into a touchdown somehow. Um, I think it's just a perfect storm to him have a massive year. I love him early in the season in DFS. I love him in season-long leagues. Uh, Mike Carey, I think it just fits perfectly with what you said about Seattle earlier and them having a tough sliding ahead in 2018. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have a, a rookie running back, an offensive line that's not great. Uh, and Russell Wilson is able to take plays that are, you know, would have been sacks for 90% of the quarterbacks in the league and run around for 7 to 10 seconds extra and find guys like Doug Baldwin. Now, the problem, my only problem with with this bet, and I still think it's a pretty good bet at fifty four to one, is ridiculous. But um, you know, opposing defenses are going to be able to target uh, Doug Baldwin more because uh, Paul Richardson is gone. He's gone to Washington. Uh, they're really going with no names at two and three. Uh, 
Uh, Doug Baldwin is the guy when it comes to a wide receiver. So, um, you know, he's shown the ability to get separation and get these passes. Uh, my worry is that maybe touchdowns might decrease because you might have double coverage, or even if he makes the catch, he might not get many yards after the catch. Uh, but still, uh, you know, touchdowns are going to matter in most receiving yards. Uh, I think this is a pretty good bet at 54 to 1. I mean, it's worth even half a unit. Good Lord. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 as long as you have a sweat late in this year, it, it pays itself. Uh, as long as you're sweating that week 17, which is super degenerate if you're sweating receiving yards at week 17. But um, that's why we We're do this. We're super sharp because you're listening to this podcast and took them at 54 to 1. Yeah. That's sure. that's the, that's the spirit. Okay. Uh, Moose, Moose, any bets we haven't talked about? Any uh, season long player props or to win uh, or to have most yards or anything that we haven't talked about yet? Yeah. So my biggest bet that I'm doing, uh, it's going to be Alex Smith under 24 passing touchdowns. Uh, the juice on that is just minus 110, like normal prop, uh, like a normal side. And three main things to show. So Alex Smith's only done that one time. He did it last year. He had 26. But he had three Pro Bowls on his team compared to none now at <laughs> Washington. And with Josh Thompson, <laughs> and with Josh Thompson getting an MRI, uh, yesterday, I know it was precautionary, should be fine, but that's just not concerning. I mean, that's concerning that that's happening. Go from a pro bowler to someone with the MRI. <laughs> um, and I was, I was asking some of you guys this uh, before the podcast, some that random uh, quarterback. But the only people who's ever done at his age throw twenty four passing touchdowns. You have Dan Marino, uh, both Mannings, Breeze, Brady. Alex Smith is not in that caliber. That's no, cool. no way. Under all day. I do like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a big difference. Going to a new offense, um, that, that's a pretty good bet, Moose. I think tw- under 24 passing touchdowns is, is probably a good look. Uh, yeah, I hope you're wrong. But, uh, you know, Jordan Reed, I, I don't know – how many times they were going to be able to put Humpty Dumpty back together again on Jordan Reed. He's just missed so much time. And it just seems like when he walks out on the field, he gets injured and he's the ma- main touchdown producer for that team. Uh, it's rough. I don't mean, I don't want to hear under because that means most of the games are going to watch this season are going to suck. But uh, you know, uh, I think that's a solid bet, especially if you get a minus minus one ten. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, well, actually, Mike, it just means that Darius Geis has run for 25 touchdowns and Alex Smith doesn't have to throw the ball at all. That's all that means. Oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, let's uh, let's wrap this up. I think this is a lot of great discussion. Um, let's send our listeners off with our favorite bet of the 2018 season that they can still get now here July 25th uh, before training camp is just getting underway and before preseason actually starts. Uh, Moose, let's start with you. Your favorite bet that you can get right now that our, our listeners should bet. Okay, yeah, so it's bets with an S, but also with an asterisk. So <laughs> that, that makes it at all. What? Okay. All right, explain. So, all right, we've talked, I've talked, Brian, Mike Gary, myself, we've all talked about this. We've preached this for years. If you can get the six and a half point teasers, regular juice, minus 110, there's what? Four long teasers available for week one right now. Just, okay. ha- just hammer long teasers. Week one. That's fair. That's fair. That, that's probably the best bet we'll make the entire podcast. For those of you who don't know, you can read uh, Wong's book on uh, Sharp Sports Betting. talks about six-point teasers. Um, seriously, one of the most profitable things you can do in the NFL. So, all right, Moose, that's super lame, but that's a good point. <laughs> it's about the grind, man. It's about the grind. Man, that's wonky. That is some wonky betting right there. <laughs> all right, Mike. Let's, Mike, Mike, let's go to you. Let's get a, a, maybe a more exciting bet that someone can make right now. I, my favorite bet that we talked about today is Atlanta 21 to one. I love adding Calvin Ridley. I mean, this whole thing with uh, Julio uh, holding out, I don't blame him. His contract isn't guaranteed until week one. I wouldn't step a foot onto the practice field either for 20 million or 13 million or however much he's, you know, trying to get. Uh, I, I'm, I'm big on Atlanta coming back. I mean, they were really, uh, really close last season, you know, minus like the Eagles going on this miracle run with falls. 
so I, I think they come back. I'm looking for them to, uh, to start the season hot, especially against the Eagles. Atlanta was four and eleven last year at uh, over under, so four overs to eleven unders. I'm looking for that to flip back to a lot of overs in Atlanta games. Yeah, that's a great point. Twenty-one to one. I like them to win the division. Um, yeah, I think we're on the same page. Really like, really, really pro Atlanta in this group. All right, let's go back to me. Um, uh, it, it would just be irresponsible if I didn't say my best bet is Chicago to win the Super Bowl at one hundred to one. <laughs> with the goal of uh, potentially hedging if they make the playoffs. Uh, but then also I have to say that Tremaine Edmonds, if you have an account at Bookmaker, you can deposit with Bitcoin in like five minutes. It's super easy. So I just feel like if you play fantasy and you play DFS and you sports bet, you're probably also into Bitcoin. I mean, that's an assumption I have. So you can uh, go deposit some of your Bitcoin and, and bet Tremaine Edmonds at 30 to 1 to win defensive rookie of the year. I even like him at 9 to 1, but 30 to 1 is an absolute no-brainer. So um that'll do it guys thanks for thanks for joining me this was super fun uh we're here about a week before nfl preseason starts our preseason content you can get it sign up now occupyfantasy.com uh, we have player notes uh advanced stats it's really the one of the most profitable times of the year to play daily fantasy sports fan duel and DraftKings. so go sign up it's gonna be super exciting um moose are you gonna be betting preseason at all mike are you guys gonna be betting of course yeah uh, absolutely I'm, and again, I'm so done with baseball. August is too long to not have any action. I'll definitely be taking. Uh, I'll definitely be taking some uh, probably totals in preseason. Preseason totals. You look at coach coaching tendencies, run pass. You know that kind of thing. Uh, you can kind of get an idea for uh, over unders. Yeah, good call there. And then, honestly, the up upside of playing preseason DFS or preseason betting is you get to look like the maniac cheering in the fourth quarter at a bar of a preseason game in week three. So uh, that's always fun when you cheer for a touchdown. 24-7 to 7 makes it 24-14, to 14, and it's all fifth-string backups playing. Um, super normal to do that when you're around other people. So go have fun with that. All right, guys, go follow all of us on Twitter. Uh, Moose, that's at CFB underscore Moose. Mike Carey, that's at MC in the DMV32. I'm at Brian Jester FF. Follow us on Twitter at Occupy Fantasy. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. Go subscribe. Uh, we're coming out with a bunch of new podcasts. We're going to have you know eight or ten different ones before the season even starts. Then obviously we'll have our in-season podcast. Remember, sign up at OccupyFantasy.com. Get the membership for access to our preseason content. And I think that's it. We'll be back sometime next week with a new podcast. I think we're talking best ball leagues. That's a, that's a big thing that season-long uh, fantasy drafts are doing. So be sure to check that out. Thanks for listening. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, be sure to hit us up. Uh, Moose, Mike Carey, thanks for joining. Thank Come you. On, All right, guys. Take it easy.